Thank you, thank you, Nomboniso, um, President of Chile. I and Mama Shell, thank you, Board of Trustees from the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. Thank you so much. I just want to read to you what my daughter yesterday at six in the morning. I wrote my daughter. She is 20 years old. That means she was born on the 25th of September, 1994. So she is what we'd call Mandela's children. I wrote her a piece. I said to her, <clears throat> hey, Nana, happy Women's Day. <clears throat> this is what she wrote. She writes back. Thank you, Papa. I am independent because of you. And I wrote back, I said, Nana, I am a man because of you. I just want to foreground what I'm going to say. I, I just want to say, to foreground what I'm going to say, that the elephant in the room is the role of men. And then until and unless as societies, President, until and unless we focus decisively, consciously on what is my role. And, and the men that are here this afternoon in this room, to ask yourself a simple question, what have I done? I've kept quiet. When someone sees me, and to acknowledge your pain, a young woman spoke about the death in the family, to say that every day, and I, we can't just go on and, and not acknowledge your pain and what you went through may as well, you've been sexually violated, to, to acknowledge that pain, but to say it was done by a certain man. And it is, it is our duty this afternoon, Mama Michelle, to say, how do we then speak? Mam Jamin, how do we, with the programs that you so wonderfully pursue in the social development, how do we ensure that men are at the center, not only as perpetrators, but as catalysts for change? How do we, in the organization I come from, at Sonke Gender Justice Network, how do we make sure that the one man can, the brothers for life, it becomes our daily discussions. How do we make sure that at Constantia, at Nyanga, every day this man, when, when, when a man wakes up, he knows that I, one man can, I have to bring a difference in the lives of other men. How do we ensure that that young man who grows in Kailicha, who has never met a father, who has never been embraced by a father, that girl who grows, who grows up a, a, who has never had the, the privilege of being told, I love you. And this, you may think, are inconsequential, are immaterial, but in the bigger scheme of things, they're critical. As we talk about the liberation, as we talk about gender, the dynamics of it, we must always be reminded that that boy has done what he, he does, mainly because there's never been a father figure. In the work we do at Songke in one community, seven boys were involved in raping a young girl who had a problem, um, you know, mental faculties. But Mama Michelle, what was very common, Minister Bajamini, what was common about all of those girls, of those boys, was that they never had a father figure in their lives. So it's important to centralize and situate the role, the important role that we can play, we must play, we should play as fathers in this day and age. If we are to stop violence against women and children, investing in the young boys, boys who grow up hopeless, who grow up helpless, boys who would not, would not care to take a life because of a cell phone, because they are surrounded by material conditions that militates against them growing up. We're in a country that had, 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 
had normalized violence, a country that had normalized poverty. The one thing that you do, I, I thought you'd give me more minutes because of my disability. <laughs> I, so I, I, I'm disappointed, I'm disappointed. I am disappointed. I will, uh, I will, I will tell, I'll tell Spongangjaro, my daughter, and say, Nana, they treat us the same. <laughs> they violate us. I'll tell my daughter, Spongangjaro. Yeah. Well, I've, 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 something I didn't tell you is that I have two disabilities. The one is my surname, and the other one is my, my, uh, this one. I got shot by police in 1986 in the head. The bullet went through during the liberation of this country. And that's why we must never forget or take for granted this freedom, that people died for this freedom. People paid the ultimate price. And, 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 and President Mandela became that embodiment of that struggle. He became, I mean, when, when, and this is what you said, uh, President, uh, from Chile, what you said yesterday, that, I mean, President Mandela, what, what kept him alive was whenever he saw South Africans, he saw himself in us. So it's important that we must never for one moment even forget that people paid the ultimate price. But also to go back and say, if you engage in men, you must also be alive to their struggles every day. That this man wakes up unemployed with no prospect of finding employment. How do I come to him and say, but you know, gender equality, you know, empowerment of women, when he himself does not know where his next meal will come from. It's important that the university, we get seized with these things. If we forget these struggles, if we forget poverty, inequality, If we forget these struggles, we will not be able to deal decisively with violence against women. I just want to say, as I close, let's, let's invest in the boy child. I would like you to support the work that we do in the world, in the country, that that boy needs no hug. That boy needs you to speak life in his lifeless life. Thank you.